October is menopause month and I'm here with Dr. Natalia Novakova, gynaecologist, with some questions that I have on menopause. Hi Natalia. Hi Nicola. So, what exactly is the menopause? Okay. Menopause is a stage of life when women stopped experiencing menstrual periods for over a year. As uh, we start living longer and longer, the duration of menopause also increases. So now women can have menopause for 40-50 years and the average age of the beginning of menopause is 51. So how does a woman know when she's reached menopause? A woman knows that she reached menopause once she hasn't had a menstrual period for over a year. For some women uh, that stage may come with unpleasant symptoms such as hot flushes, mood swings, irritability, insomnia, joint pain, as well as low libido, vaginal dryness, and for others no symptoms occur at all and they will just transition into the stage without uh, any unpleasant um, symptoms. So why is it important to know when you're reaching it? Well, it's not that important if you are not having any symptoms uh, and you don't require any help. But however, if you have unpleasant symptoms, they can be related to menopause, but they can only be related to other conditions such as thyroid disease or possibly depression or other things that uh, may be causing such unpleasant uh, symptoms. Hence, distinguishing between menopause and other diseases will be important, so correct treatment is administered. How can I tell I'm reach I've reached it if I'm using an IUD? So if it's a copper T, for example, non-hormonal IUD, then you will know because your periods will stop. However, if it's an IUD that stops the menstrual periods, which is a hormonal IUD, for example, Mirena or Kailina, you may not know that you uh, reached the menopause, but we can do a blood test uh, checking FSH or follicular stimulating hormone, which will then tell us if woman is in menopause or not. In my case, I started crying a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> I went to my GP and thought it might be something to do with antidepressants I needed, and she pointed out this and said, I prescribed this about three years ago, and I said, yep, didn't think it did very much, so I didn't continue asking for a repeat prescription. Well, why don't you try it? Um, do you think that was a good idea at the time, and should I have picked up on it earlier? I don't think you needed to pick up on uh, it earlier, so the GP prescribed an estrogen gel, uh, and estrogen gel will help with the fluctuation in estrogen levels that occurs in perimenopausal period. Our ovaries are stimulated by uh, glands in the brain to produce certain amount of estrogen and progesterone. As those hormones decrease in production as we age, our brains pr make kind of more stimulus to our ovaries to increase production of the hormones. However, ovaries are not able to produce more, so from time to time there will be spikes of estrogen. And those spikes and dips will cause unpleasant symptoms such as hot flushes, irritability, crying a lot, etc. And substituting it with estrogen from the outside would be very helpful because that would allow for the stable level of estrogen in the circulation and avoid dips and stop the unpleasant symptoms. Not everyone cries as they get to menopause, some people have other symptoms. Um, it's great that it, there was such a simple and safe solution to the crying and um, should you have started earlier? No, because there were no symptoms. So what is the most effective treatment uh, of uh, menopausal symptoms? That would depend on a symptom. So for example, for hot flushes, hormone replacement with estrogen um, and progesterone to protect the uterus for women who have uterus and women who do not have uterus is only estrogen in gel, uh, cream uh, or patch form or in a tablet. 
for women who experience um, irritability, once again, hormone replacement would be suitable. Uh, women with uh, vaginal dryness um, would, would do quite well with um, hyaluronic acid gels uh, or vaginal moisturizers plus estrogen treatment vaginally. And estrogen treatment vaginally in tablet form, which we have in South Africa, we used to have a cream form as well. It does not absorb, so it, it works only locally and it's very, very useful uh, to prevent pain during sex, to prevent bladder infections and to treat vaginal atrophy or thinning of vaginal skin. Uh, women with low libido uh, generally have low testosterone levels and testosterone cream will be very useful for them. And women who do not want to use hormone replacement treatment can use su supplements and uh, we, one can uh, decide on what supplements depending on the symptom to help with their symptoms. Uh, generally they take longer to work um, and are not as Are there any other effective treatments? So it will all depend on what symptoms a woman experiences. So as I said, if there is no symptoms, do you need to take a hormone treatment? Not necessarily. Some uh, women believe that taking a hormone replacement treatment will uh, preserve their skin and uh, uh, prevent sagginess and dryness and wrinkles. There is no good evidence for that, but plenty of women will be taking hormone replacement just for that reason. I like treating women with menopausal symptoms to help them deal with their symptoms. If someone doesn't have symptoms, it's very difficult to motivate them using a chronic medication for life. In, when we administer Femigel, uh, we always combine it with progesterone and progesterone can be in the oral form, it does not absorb in the cream form, or it can be a, in the intrauterine device such as Mirena or Kailina. So in women in menopause, IUDs with progesterone are useful to protect the uterus from the negative effects of estrogen. Uh, if women does not have a uterus because of previous hysterectomy, they do not need to take progesterone and estrogen preparations are enough. One can use gel or we also have tablets and patches and they can be combined with estrogen or and progesterone or estrogen only uh, for those who had previous hysterectomy. How do you choose what preparation to take? The most, the safest preparation is the transdermal one, so it will be either gel um, or, for example, bioidentical cream compounded in the pharmacy or a patch. And if um, transdermal route for one or another re reason is not suitable for a particular woman or not convenient, then we'll administer the tablets. So the difference uh, between uh, routine hormone supplementation and bioidentical hormones um, well, bioidentical hormonal treatment hasn't been studied as much as uh, our standard medical preparations and certainly it's not regulated in the same way. So there's lots of misbeliefs about it. Also, bioidentical hormonal preparations are compounded in various pharmacies and the regulations for compounding pharmacy will be very different. And quite often I find that it's quite difficult to dose and um, I think because it, come, well, it comes in a cream form so sometimes it's not, the dosage is not well distributed so you will find that at times there are no effects from it or too many effects. So bioidentical hormonal treatment is suitable uh, if women choose it but would it be my preference? Um, not necessarily, but I'll support my patients in their choices. There is also a hormonal preparations that I haven't mentioned, which is implants. So estrogen, uh, progesterone, testosterone implants are also available. They are bioidentical and it's a little tablet that is inserted under the skin. So one has to inject local anesthetic and uh, make a tiny cut and in insert the implant which 
would be repeated every three to four months and every time we do this procedure there is tiny scar that is left on the bum so at the end women who uses implants have lots and lots of scars and personally may may not be my preference but I have plenty of patients who are super happy with their implants and they gladly come every three months as they can feel uh, the hormonal levels uh, decreasing and symptoms appearing to get a new implant. Side effects of hormonal treatments are of course present and not everyone can use hormonal preparation though transdermal hormonal preparations are super safe. The negative side effects will come with mild and non-specific ones such as fluid retention, uh, we even talk about weight gain, but it's really our lifestyle that influences life, uh, uh, weight gain and non-hormonal preparation. Some women lose weight with hormonal preparation, some women say they have a hair loss, others have improvement in their hair growth. Uh, some women complain of nausea, but that's very uncommon and uh, advice in that case is to take uh, tablets uh, in the evening or change to transdermal route. Serious side effects such as increase in the rate of breast cancer only kicks in after the woman was using hormone treatment for over four to five years. The risk of that is increased only um, very little, but there is an increased risk. Interestingly, obesity has a higher increased risk on breast cancer than hormone replacement. So our lifestyle is super important uh, and more important than actually hormone replacement. Mm. Other side effects such as clotting um, is one of them, hence we uh, make sure that we don't use oral uh, preparations in women with the risk or increased risk of clotting or heart disease. Uh, you should take HRT for as long as you need it. For majority of women it will not be longer for a couple of years to transition into uh, postmenopausal uh, menopausal stage. Um, you only need HRT if you have symptoms of menopause. If you don't have symptoms you don't have to take it. Um, there are reason, other reasons to prescribe HRT, for example, to, for, pre, for treatment of osteoporosis, but we do have uh, medications that treat osteoporosis, um, but estrogen does protect our bones. Um, there is um, also um, research showing that estrogen uh, protects uh, development of dementia, uh, so that's another reason uh, to take HRT. Uh, lots of women in perimenopausal period complain of brain fork and as soon as they start taking uh, HRT their memory improves and they can think clearly. Um, so, so some patients take HRT until they're 90, basically f through the whole life because they cannot get off it once they stop taking in the crying returns irritability returns or insomnia or hot flashes hence those women will not bother themselves with a remote risk of increased risk of breast cancer because their quality of life without hrt is absolutely terrible